Look at this title, bro. Teacher claps a psychotic, lonely student and regrets it. Also, Jenna Ortega, you feel me? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Prada Recaps. Today, I'll be recapping an American 2024 thriller comedy film called Miller's Girl. Before we begin, please consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons. These actions may seem insignificant, but they significantly influence the channel. Also, leave a comment. It helps boost the system. You know what I'm saying? So my video can get out to more people so I could uh, feed my family. Tell you shit. Enjoy the recap. What would you have done if you were in this teacher's position? Would you fall for a beautiful student like Cairo or reject her? Watch the full recap and let us know in the comments. Me! <laughs> the movie begins with our main protagonist, Cairo, introducing herself. She's just turned 18 and admits to being different from most people her age. Cairo describes herself as a wealthy girl with Jenna, dreams, bro. but stuck in a small town. She lives in a large old house called Level Hill in the suburbs of Tennessee. She doesn't have much company because her parents, who are lawyers, are often traveling abroad. They stay away most of the year, leaving Cairo alone in the house. She has to walk through the forests to get to her high school, all by herself to deal with her loneliness. Are there people Cairo like turned... this, bro? Are there people like, are there actually kids like this, bro? You're in the high school and your parents, like, just, they just never home? I, I refuse to believe like, that people, like, like, there's people out there like this, bro. Ain't no way, bro. Not in the high school. Not without, like, like getting you, like, I don't know, some kind of babysitter or, like, some kind of uh, older parental kind of person there. It's just leaving you alone in a, in a creepy, creepy house. Nah, bro. They're not, they're not going for that, bro. They're not going for that, bro. Nah to literature and writing. She loves reading and writing, and literature is the only thing that gives her comfort. Cairo's only friend in school, Winnie Black, encourages her to enroll in a new creative writing course. Winnie suggests this because she knows Cairo has a passion for writing. W. When Winnie? Cairo joins the class, she meets Jonathan Miller, the English teacher. At first glance, Mr. Miller appears to be an ordinary teacher, lacking any distinguishing features. However, Cairo's interest in the class stems primarily from the fact that Mr. Miller is a published author, a trait she shares with him. Miller, however, gave up writing after getting married and became a teacher. His wife, Beatrice, who seems to be- you will, you will start to notice that like literally almost every teacher, you know what I'm saying, literally gave up on their dreams to become a teacher. You know what I'm saying, bro? So next time you just, your teacher looks at you and says, oh, you're not gonna go nowhere, bro. Emotionally. Look at you teacher in the eye, be like, you gave up, okay? Don't talk to me about giving my mom my dreams because I know where I'm going to go. <laughs> ...towards him, became a more successful author. She constantly mocks Miller Special for business not having teachers, the bro. to write something new. One night, Miller reveals to his wife that a student had mentioned his book. you a business professor and writing. you ain't got no business. Just then, Beatrice gets a call from her work. After the call, the couple drinks some whiskey and begins to get intimate with each other. Oh. But then Beatrice's job calls again. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna have to watch this movie, ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Cairo stresses to Winnie about her college admission essay. She has to write an essay for Yale University, with the subject being the greatest achievement to date. However, she cannot find anything worthy to write about, even though Winnie points out that Cairo is the top student in the school, getting good grades in every subject. She doesn't think it's a worthy accomplishment. Winnie then suggests Cairo to write about a teacher-student relationship, as she intends to do so with the school's gym teacher, Boris Fillmore, who is Miller's best friend. She mentions how Mr. Miller often focuses Yo, on attention- Yo, y'all got low standards, ain't gonna lie. Cairo ...during their English class. The next day in class, Winnie jokingly suggests Cairo seduce Mr. Miller and write about the experience- Freaky and little ho! What, what? Mr. Miller, as usual, pays special attention to Cairo and instructs her to meet him after class. In the next scene, Miller is working at his desk when Boris arrives. <laughs> Miller invites him to join him and his wife for dinner. An excited Boris exits the room, dancing his way out. Miller mimics his colleague's moves, just as Cairo unexpectedly appears in front of him. Cairo giggles and comments on his dance moves. Miller awkwardly regains his composure and talks to her about the latest assignment. Cairo confesses to drawing inspiration from his book and even recites a section from it, demonstrating a profound impact on her. This impresses Miller even more because he admits that his own work has never been praised like this before. He also recalls the lines Cairo wrote in a class assignment, showing that he's already a fan of his talented student. 
Miller then gives Cairo a writing assignment to create a short story in the style of her favorite author. As they talk, he learns about Cairo's lack of interest in everything related to Tennessee. He then suggests that she should go to a nearby poetry event with him where they can discuss the assignments. Cairo decides to attend the event almost right away. Later that evening, Miller, his wife Beatrice, and the gym teacher Boris hang out in a dine-in. Winnie, who happens to work there part-time, takes their orders. Beatrice then asks her husband whether Winnie is the student Miller was talking about last time. Miller replies that it's actually her friend named Cairo. It is evident that Beatrice is a little concerned about the whole situation. To cheer herself up, she begins to complain about her husband to Boris. Bro, she mentions weird. that what? Miller hasn't made progress what? as a writer because for the past few years, he's Yo, been working as a regular me, high school teacher. That's what I say, bro. A, a teacher is where, where, where dreams go to die. <laughs> a teacher is where humans go to kill the dream, bro. I swear to conditions. Since she is a busy and popular writer, often occupied with her work, she feels that her husband lacks the determination to be a professional writer. The scene then shifts to the poetry event to which Miller had asked Cairo to join him. The two start spending Me? more time together outside of class, bonding over their shared interests in novels, but who smokes ciggies, bro? and Tennessean culture. One day in class, Miller gets a text from his wife Beatrice, who suggests they spend the weekend going away to a beach. Miller agrees to her idea, but before he can finish for the day, Cairo approaches him. She tells him that she has chosen to write the assignment to create a short story in the style of her favorite author, Henry Miller. Since Henry Miller has faced criticism and literature for his explicit language and expression, which some find offensive, Mr. Miller initially hesitates on her decision, but he trusts Cairo's writing style and eventually gives her the green light to proceed with her story. Green light. Cairo then learns that he is going away for the weekend with his wife, so she becomes quite upset. In an attempt to jeopardize the plan, she leaves her cell phone in Miller's bag before he leaves the school premises. When Miller arrives at his house, he sadly learns that their weekend getaway plan has been canceled because tough. Beatrice cannot take leave from work. That's Suddenly, tough. a phone starts to ring from inside his bag. It is Cairo who is calling from her home phone. She pretends to have mistakenly lost her cell phone and suggests that Miller should return it to her house. By this time, Miller is also frustrated due to his wife's busy schedule causing a delay in their vacation. He then decides- and he has to, to release some stress, stress, if you know what I mean. <laughs> when he arrives at Cairo's grand mansion, it suddenly starts to rain. As he pulls up to the house in the pouring rain- It's a freaky movie, ain't gonna lie. Dressed in an elegant evening- Hey, yo, that's a silk- Walks out- who would like to be Cairo's teacher? Me. <laughs> yo, yo, Cairo coming out like that. Yo, me. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. To meet him. What? She invites him to come closer, but Miller insists she should. And it's him. raining. Then they share a passionate kiss. Oh nah. See? Scene, we see, you can't Cairo be alone. You can't be house, doing that as a teacher. Ain't gonna lie. And contemplating the magical moment they just had inspired. She said magical. She writes an erotic short story about the sexual relationship between a teacher and his student as her midterm assignment. She then emails her assignment to Miller. In the meantime, Miller and his wife are currently engaged in their individual works. Beatrice asks Miller to give her some personal time as she cannot focus on her work. As a result, Miller goes over to his old work shed and prints out the assignment sent by Cairo. He begins to Prince read the erotic out. short story, I guess teacher, after so yeah. which he cannot help but get aroused. Hey, yo! He eventually touches himself while reading the story. However, Mr. Hey, Miller's yo. attitude towards the entire matter changes the very next day. It seems that he is <laughs> Man, that post not clearly be hitting hard, ain't gonna lie! <laughs> guilt, having realized how wrong his actions were. Yo, Miller that post not clearly be hitting. unacceptable and demands Cairo to change it. Cairo tells him that the story resonates with their relationship. Miller strictly denies her claim, he said, mm -hmm. telling her that they do not have such kind of relationship between them whatsoever. Cairo suddenly feels a pang in her stomach, making her realize that she is no longer important to him. Upset and hurt at the same time, she calls him out for his cowardice and hypocrisy. Miller then says that he was foolish for trusting she could write in his style, calling her a child. Cairo claims that he blurred the line of their relationship in real life, 
to which Miller says she is his student, and that's all. And if she misunderstood something, then that's her problem. In response, Cairo criticizes him, calling him a mediocre writer, and warns him that denying his role in their apparent relationship will have negative consequences. See that right there? That is the look of someone that is not mentally okay. You feel me, Broski? She is plotting upon the downfall of his, of it, not only him, but his whole bloodline, okay? You wanna stay away from women like this, okay? They may look pretty, they may talk sexy, they may walk sexy, they might even have a caboose. But trust, 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 you know, I was, I said me, I retract my knee from early, you know what I'm saying? Who would like to be Carl's teacher? Me? No, I retract it, you know what I'm saying? I retract it. This is a psychopath right here. She's gonna, I don't know what's gonna happen for the rest of the movie, but I, I do know, I do know it's not good for Mr. T, I don't know his name, I don't remember his name. What's the teacher's name, chat? I, I don't I don't know, it doesn't matter. It's not good Cairo though. then leaves the scene devastated and upset. She later drinks oh, her sadness nah. with Winnie and tells her about what happened earlier. I thought she said she was 18 and she drinking, bro. Miller's rejection, Cairo <laughs> shares her story with the we've never drink, the following we've day. We've never drink under she tends to expose right, a chat. possible affair between a student and a teacher and make Miller face potential threats to his career. Consequently, Beatrice receives a call from the school administration stressing about the situation. Oh, nah. She then questions if there was anything going on between Miller and the student. Miller assures her insistently that there is nothing romantic or inappropriate between them. In the next scene, both Cairo and Miller are summoned to the vice principal's office. Oh, nah. The vice principal interviews them both separately regarding their relationship. Despite Miller claiming that nothing inappropriate occurred between them, he takes full responsibility as the adult, leading to his suspension. This also creates a strain on his friendship. Yo, with that Alex. hairline is crisp, bro. Y'all you know see him, bro? I mean, he do got like a like a, like a three D forehead. You know what I'm saying it protrudes out a little bit, but the line is clean. Who blames him for not understanding his limits as a teacher? I lied. Boris states that he knows where the line My fault. is and avoids crossing That's it all in me. his own interactions with Winnie, who is overly expressing her feelings towards him. That night, Miller tells his wife about his suspension from the school. Beatrice is now more suspicious about the relationship. When she first heard about a student showing interest in her husband, she had taken it lightly, even trying to use it to add excitement to their own relationship. Man, freaky, However, her freaky attitude wild, changes freaky wife. she asks Miller whether he likes Cairo, to which Miller remains mum now. She believes her husband had also reciprocated Cairo's feelings. This angers Beatrice, On the silky causing dress, her to like express pent-up anger and highlight the toxic tire, ain't gonna lie. The couple gets into a heated argument, Kinda dig it. <laughs> both criticizing each other for their lack of commitment to the marriage. Eventually, Beatrice decides to file for a divorce. In the meantime, Winnie realizes the impact of Cairo's actions on Miller, so she asks her friend to withdraw the charges against him, but Cairo refuses to do so. Cause she's a psychopath! Instead, she sees Miller's downfall as her greatest achievement to date and wants to mention the experience in her admission essay. Cairo eventually uses her experiences to write the Yale application essay. Yale? Highlighting how she challenged societal norms related to age and sexuality. She reflects on the profound lessons she learned about the seriousness of mature relationships. In the end, Miller loses his job and the people closest to him. But despite hitting rock bottom, he unexpectedly discovers the inspiration for the first time in years and decides to write a new book. Yo. No! There's, there's not, that's, that's it! Okay, first of all, I gotta go watch the movie. Second of all, they can't end a cliffhanger like that. God damn, bro, what the heck? That is a crazy spot to end. You know what I'm saying? Yo, if it's, I don't know, bro. I don't, I, I, I thought I was, I, 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 you know what I'm saying? I, I really can't like do nothing, to, like what? I gotta watch that movie, bro, because that's no way, you know, there's no way that's just, that's the movie, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, there's gotta be more, Taisha, you know what I mean? There's gotta be more. Like, comment, because it boosts, boosts the video and the algorithm, you know what I'm saying? Subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. You feel me, bro? Daddy loves you, as always, never forget that. And also, um, link into my cake in the description, I think. Maybe if I remember to post it.